So I wasn't sure where to begin with this story. It's 12.35 at night. I've been in the hospital now a month and a half. I'm in rehab. Looks like they're going to put me out on the street next, or this coming Friday. I'm not sure how that's going to work. I do have a hotel room in Charlottesville, Virginia, next to the University of Virginia Hospital. Just thought I'd show you around the room a little bit. But let's whip this around and tell a little bit of the story. So I just thought I'd throw this up on YouTube. You know, I've been in and out of hospitals my whole life. In fact, you can't even get a vein on my arms no more. They completely run from, well, bad doctors. <clears throat> you know, they, um, for some reason, they don't want to go out to the veins in the legs. They say that's going to cause clots. And why in the world they didn't put a pick line or a port in? But, um... I don't know whether to start at the end of the story or the beginning of the story, because I was kind of talking about helping my mom along the way, and I guess I got to go back through those videos. So let's just start at the end of the story. So, uh, <clears throat> mom had uh, she had died. Can't give you the date, um, but the funeral was going to be on Cinco de Mayo, and. Uh, I had been working around the house uh, and, well, take his frustration out on some stumps and working with various uh, lenders, faxing death certificates for my father, closing accounts, dealing with the insurance companies, you name it, I've been doing it, paying the um, funeral home, making the funeral arrangements. Luckily, she had dealt with the cemetery. And uh, it was two days before the funeral. And I... Uh, cousin of mine I hadn't seen in quite some time and frankly didn't care whether I saw him again or not they stopped by the house and well I was celebrating a bit because <clears throat> everything was pretty much done at that point or so I thought and uh, I was kind of looking back proud of myself thinking damn that's a hell of a lot of work there and so I was eh, tipping a little bit into the whiskey not a whole lot and drinking some beers, and I was watching, well, after my cousin left, uh, binge watching The Blacklist. Got to be about 11 o'clock at night, <clears throat> and uh, I decided, well, you know what, I, I kind of looked at the whiskey bottle. I'd say about that much was gone out of it, and I thought, man, you know, I better slow down. I don't want to be hung over tomorrow, so I said, let's go to bed. Cut the lights off. Got into my mom's kitchen. Now, it's a three-level house. And it's about 12 steps down to the basement. And then you got five steps up to the uh, bedroom level. And to get to the bedroom level, you got to go through these folding doors. And I, uh, I got, I remember coming out of the, uh, well, we call it the sunroom. And I, uh, and that's it. I don't remember anything further. Uh, other than I woke up on the floor in the basement and uh, I couldn't I couldn't move at first and I was like oh my god because you know I'm all alone in my mom's house it could have been three four days before somebody actually came in the house to check on me I mean I you know my um, uh, mom's best friend or my adopted stepsister she works for a living and I knew she wasn't planning to come by for about three more days at that time, we had kind of engaged a real estate agent, but I wasn't sure if she'd be stopping by. And that's really the only two people, so I knew I had to get to it. Of course, I didn't have a phone anywhere nearby. So um, it took me about, um, I don't know, well, at first it took me about an hour or two to realize where the hell I was. I was on the basement floor in the basement, and uh, I knew I'd, something was really messed up. Well, I, it took me a good hour, two, three, to get onto my knees because I, I knew I had to get to a phone. I would dehydrate and die laying there in that basement. And uh, I remembered there was a phone in the, um, just around the corner in the, um, we call it the rec room in the basement. Pretty big room, you know, pool table, sofas, you know, where we used to do all our entertaining when I was young, 
before my parents died. And I crawled around there and I got to the phone and <laughs> the phone was dead. <laughs> I thought, and I, man, I tell you what, I, I, it hurt. It hurt so bad to try to get to that phone. Anyway, so then I realized the only phone I could think of was my cell phone and I knew I'd left it on the sofa upstairs next to the TV. And I, uh, but I had 12 stairs to climb up. And at first I tried to stand up and I almost fell back down. Thank God I didn't. Probably be paralyzed for life. Because, well, I, let's continue the story. I don't want to spoil the, the moment of truth. So I kind of kept, you know, I knew that I was in tremendous pain. And, uh, you know, I wasn't sure if, you know, what I had done, but I knew that I just kind of kept my, my head looking down at the stairs because that's all I could do. Because I knew if I turned my neck, it hurt like a son of a gun. So I just kind of kept my head nice and straight. And I would get one hand up one stair, and then I'd rest for about 15, 20 minutes, and then I'd bring my knee up one stair, and then I'd rest about 15, 20 minutes, and then I'd bring the other hand up a stair, and I'd rest about 15, 20 minutes, you know, doing breathing exercises and everything. And I just kept saying in my mind, you know, Marine Corps basic training, everybody should go through it in my mind. I kept, come on, Marine, you can do it, man. You can get up these stairs. And uh, I just kept going one at a time. You can't imagine what a glorious moment it was when I got to the kitchen. And there, my mom has a landline, but it, it, it sits, you know, above the trash compactor up on the wall. And no way I could stand up to get it. And uh, I didn't, at the time, I could have gone in the closet and possibly gotten a broom to knock that, that uh, phone off the wall. <clears throat> but I was thinking about the cell phone. And I said, well, all I got to do is crawl across this kitchen floor. And it took me a while. I crawled across the kitchen floor past the kitchen table. And, of course, the sunroom's down, actually, a step. And uh, let me switch hands here. Oh, man, I can't only hold it. Hold it. I'm pretty weak still, even after a month and a half in the hospital. That's why I haven't had put any videos up on the channel. So I got into the uh, sunroom. And I crawled around the sofa, and the problem was, you know, when you're on your knees, you can make it, but I actually had to kind of get up to the side of the sofa and just kind of peek over the side to see if I could see the phone, and no phone was there. And I thought, that's it, I'm done, you know. And, and But I managed to pull the cover back, and there was the phone, thank God. So I collapsed. I, I got Somehow I got the phone into my hand. And I collapsed right there onto the floor, and I, uh, I went to call. Um, well, I, uh, my um, mom's best friend, and uh, well, the real estate agent. And I, uh, I looked at the phone, and it said no signal. <laughs> no signal. Oh man, I was just sitting there. Oh man, I no signal. My mom's house is it's the only place on earth that is a dead zone for the Samsung Galaxy S21 that I use to make videos. I don't know why it's a dead zone and uh so then I thought, well, sometimes even in dead zones, ah, let me get the repositioned here. Ah, there we go. Sometimes even in dead zones the um phone will work with 911. So I called 911 and man, the call went through. Oh my God, can you imagine? Now, by the way, I didn't, I, getting back to the beginning, it, it was 11 o'clock at night when obviously I got somehow fell down the stairs or maybe my mom's poltergeist came back and booted me down them stairs. I mean, that's, uh, that's honestly what I think happened. She was getting her sweet revenge. She cussed me out for six months and, uh, I think this was uh, Montezuma's revenge, or Mama's revenge, I guess I should say. Because I really don't know how I fell down the stairs. I, I couldn't tell you. I, um, maybe I thought I was going up the stairs and took the first left instead of the second left, but it's all a blank. Because uh, knocked obviously, when I went down the stairs, it also knocked me out. So I was knocked out a good 11, 12 hours before I woke up. And the only reason I know 11 or 12 hours was because it was... It was daylight, and I'm thinking, well, man, you know, if, if I got knocked down at 11, I was doing the math in my head, 
And when I got upstairs, you know, after, well, I mean, I, I don't know how long it took me to get upstairs, but it was a good three or four in the afternoon at this point. And so I'm thinking, man, how long was I knocked out for? Anyway, 911 went through, and uh, what was pretty cool was dispatch stayed on the line with me. Uh, don't hang up the phone. Don't hang up the phone. You know, you know. Hold on, Mister that, that cybersecurity guy. You, uh, you're gonna you work. We got a team on the way. We got an ambulance on the way. Because I told them, you know, I couldn't move. And, uh, and then, of course, when they get there, man, that's a sweet sound. You hear those. <laughs> yep, we got him right here. He's uh, laying on the floor. We're looking for a way into the house. <laughs> he says, Well, you know. And we, Rather than bust down the door, we think we could get in. There's an air conditioning unit here. Get the ladder. Get the ladder, Billy Bob. So, you know, you hear him out there, and I'm thinking, well, at least I'll get rescued off of this floor, and I'm not going to dehydrate to death. Who knows, you know, what's wrong. So anyway, the, uh, I, hear, I, could hear, I couldn't move. You know, I couldn't turn my head. Down. All I could do is just lay in the floor and just stare at the sofa, and I could hear him ripping that air conditioning <laughs> God knows, God knows what damage was done to the house. I never got, I never even got to see it. And uh, so anyway, they came in, they they grabbed me and uh, threw me up on the stretcher. And uh, and uh, and, and my, the guy, I mean, amazingly, uh, they ran back in the house and grabbed my cell phone. And, and and you know, the story goes on from there. I can't tell the whole story in this video. We're just gonna break this up in many videos. Anyway, so um, the guy, uh, I mean, why? Uh, why in the hell EMS thought to grab the cell phone? That was pretty cool. I wish he had grabbed the charger. That was a pain in the butt. I mean, I don't know why hospitals don't have chargers anywhere. And man, getting the phone charged from time to time. I, I lived, that's all I had uh, for the last, for a whole month was my phone. I didn't have any of my clothes. I just wore hospital clothes. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of the story. <clears throat> so they uh, took me to um, the uh, hospital there. And uh, it's called Lynchburg General Central Health. And uh, so, you know, I, I, I probably passed out, I think. And I, all I remember is a doctor waking me up and he says, uh, you know, that cybersecurity guy, I got bad news for you. He says, uh, you know, we're going to have to, uh, he says, we're going to transfer you to a, a different facility with your permission. And I said, well, <clears throat> let me switch hands again. There we go. Hopefully I'm not blocking the camera. And uh, I said, well, you know, I'd like to go to the VA in Roanoke. And uh, he says, well, he says, that's not where I really think that you need to go. And I said, what do you mean? He says, well, I, I, he says, with the extent of the damage to your neck, he says, there's only one facility in Virginia that I would recommend, and that's the University of Virginia Hospital. He said, the neurosurgeons there are top notch. I said, but yeah, but all I got is Medicare. I said, what's that going to cover? And, you know, of course, I'm, you know, I'm thinking money in my head, which I probably shouldn't be. It's like, will I, you know, am I going to be paralyzed? Will I ever walk again? You know, and these are the thoughts that should have been running through my head. And he says, well, you know, that's your decision. He says, but I said, well, what would you do, Doc? He says, I would most definitely go to UVA. So then next thing I know, I'm in the ambulance again and it actually seemed like a short trip, and I tell you what, the two guys in the ambulance were great guys. Um, so they brought me to UVA, and they dropped me off, and uh, so the um, they took a bunch of x-rays, and the doc comes in, and I'll never forget him. I, I remember him because of Voldemort. Remember in Harry Potter? And it, so it was Dr. Volmer, and I shouldn't be naming him, but good guy, really. I mean, but nothing but compliments for him, and... Uh, so anyway, he um, comes in and he goes, he says, well, he says, I, I've only seen your, your type of injury one time in my career. <laughs> you know, was that good or bad? He says, well, it's good. He says, because it's, uh, it's repairable. Um, he says, and, and he says, luckily I've seen it once before. And uh, he says, then that's why I'm taking your case because uh, he says, that was a hockey player that I worked on before. Uh, professional hockey player and uh, he said he's back playing hockey so he said so I think we can get you back you know in pretty good shape if not 100% but it's going to take a long time a lot of healing a lot of physical therapy and uh, you know who knows you may be able to live a normal life again I said damn okay well so what do we got to do he says well he says I want you to understand we're going to put you in traction now I didn't know what traction was if you ever seen traction what they do is it's like Frankenstein they they stick a bolt right here 
or up here and they stick a bolt on this side and then they put a weight pan and they take weights and they put it on there and then they x-ray your neck because what had happened was my spine had it folded over top of itself i don't really understand it but one like maybe the spine's made up of multiple bones but anyway one bone was behind another bone and they wanted to pull my neck up high enough so that they could and they actually started the operation because they came in from the front on that operation with the traction they had 20 pounds of weights on my neck they actually left me that way for like two days man i tell you that was whew, that was brutal and uh before the surgery and then so finally you know once the, my neck was just where the doctor wanted it you know they brought me into surgery and he came in from the front and uh, and then he described it everything to me and he said uh and i'm going to finish up this video it got long-winded and uh, he says well he says he says i put a lot of hardware in there he says you've got a couple of plates uh, some screws uh he says and i was able to repair most of the damage um he says uh, but uh unfortunately he says i'm gonna have to come in from the back of the neck and i was trying to avoid that he says uh um, he says i just can't get the repair done just coming in from the front and i uh, and i don't know why he, he didn't he really didn't want to go in from the back and i said well whatever you got to do doc i mean you know i'm we're fine and he says okay he says well that's he says i just want your permission you know make sure that you're aware of the risks involved and he says you know this is touch and go he says we could you could be paralyzed the rest of your life or you know he says but he says i'm pretty confident in in you know what we can accomplish and so two days later i'm back in surgery again and uh they came in from the back this time and i uh, of course i woke up and, uh, and the doc's smiling and he says he says well he says he says, I dare say it's one of one of my best surgeries ever. He says, uh, he says, you got more hardware in there. And he says, I took a titanium mesh and he says, I actually wrapped it around your spine to reinforce it. I said, well, is that good? And he says, yeah, yeah. He says, it, it, he says, I think we've got, he says, if, if anything, he says, you, he says, I honestly believe you're going to come back to 100% because I, you know, I was worried about hiking, you know, hiking's my shtick. And uh, I said, man, that's fantastic, doc. And uh, he says, yeah, he says, but it's going to be a long, long recovery. Um, and so then, uh, you know, I went back. Of course, I'm in intensive care. And, uh, and then I went back to intensive care. And that's where we'll end this video. Um, and I'll just get it uploading right now. And uh, I can't wait to see it tomorrow. <laughs> I don't even know what I look like. I wish I could have gotten some video of me. I guess I could have it with that traction bolt on top of my head. I did get a picture of it. You know, maybe I'll add that uh, one someday when I edit this video uh, to put it up on, you know, whatever, maybe Rumble or whatever. Anyway, you guys, peace out. <clears throat> Stay free. Uh, I'm in the home stretch. Uh, someday I'll get back to Florida. I haven't seen my house in Florida in, uh, well, it, I guess we're coming up on six months now. Uh, and that's a long, long story in and of itself. And well, we'll just start making some story videos here for you. A little bit different for the channel. All right. See you later.